I'm going to talk to you about the end times and what God is saying, what God is doing, uh, what is happening, why it's happening. And I just want to mention something to you that right now, there's so much spiritual activity taking place. There's so much spiritual activity. There's the, the spirit dimension is in motion. Something is happening. And um, we are in the times of the earth that, that nothing will remain the same as we know it. And as you know, um, there's a global agenda being worked, um, you know, in, in, on the earth. So we see so many things happening, and this is important. And this is what I want you to know. All global crises are fulfillment of prophecy. Whenever you see global crisis, worldwide crisis, is a fulfillment of prophecy. Lift your hands and say prophecy. There's nothing happening outside of the will of God. Do not worry about it. Thinking, oh my God, what is going to happen? What is going to No, no, don't worry that nothing is happening outside of the will of God. You can take your seat. Can you put your hand together? Give Jesus a big praise this morning. Nothing is happening by accident. That is something else that I want you to understand. That nothing is happening by accident. And you think, oh my God, no, it's not accident. So there you see that there's uh, all the nations are being shaken and all these things that are happening, there's a shake up to wake up. Okay, in other words, the church is not is is sleeping. The church is not awake. So it's important that we understand there's a shaking taking place in the heavens and the earth dry land because there's a purpose on it. And the purpose is to shake up, to wake up. In other words, the majority of the church today is not aware what is happening and why it's happening. So I want you to know that. There's, it's not aware at all, at all. So anything that you see happening. So in this shaking, you will see two type of people. Write that down, please. You will find victims and victors. Let, let's, let's take a teaching and remove it out of being centered on you and let's center on the plan and the global agenda of God. There's so many people that when you touch something that is not have to do with, oh, I have to, God has to speak to me personally. Well, that is going to be personal, but you need to focus on the global purposes of God. And the eternal purposes of God. Lift your hands and say, eternal purposes. Oh, I want to do my assignment. I understand, but your assignment is connected to the global assignment of God. So can I hear an amen on that at least? So you want to see victims and victors. In other words, people, are you going to be a victorious person? Are you going to be a victim of what is happening? So this is important the way you see things. Can I hear an amen on that? So now I want you to see something very important. Prophecy is about three things. When it comes to prophecy, I want you to write that down. Prophecy is nothing more than foretelling of the future. The foretelling or the prediction, foretelling prophecy is to say something before it happened. And I want you to see prophecy on the screen. Prophecy is written about three people on the Bible. And write that down too. There's young people, adults. I want you to see uh, when we get into this topic. How critical times we live in. How dangerous times we live in. How it's important that you be informed and know what is happening. And why it's happening. And I want you to see uh, what's the purpose of prophecy. Prophecy is, is for you to know. For you to know what? For you to know the future, for you to know what is going to happen, for you to know uh, why it's happening, for you to know. In other words, God doesn't want you to be blinded and ignorant about what is happening. Can I hear an amen on that? Number two, prophecy is for you to prepare. In other words, how can you prepare if, if you already know, I've been preaching and prophesying what the times that we're going to have in the financial arena. We're going to have a, a, an economic collapse. As a matter of fact, we already started it. It's already started. It. Inflation, recession is coming. So how can you prepare? If you don't know prophecy, if you go to a pastoral church, it will be hard because pastoral church, it was more focused on the caring of the people. 
But an apostolic and prophetic church is important because it will let you know what is going to happen and it will prepare you for the future. So this is important. Number three, prophecy is foretelling the future. In other words, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20, I want you to see something. We cannot despise prophecy. There's a lot of people, oh, oh yeah, yeah, they saying that Jesus is coming and, and he hasn't come yet. Well, don't despise prophecy, the foretelling of the future. So despise not prophesying. In other words, it is so important prophecy because why why you cannot despise prophecy because prophecy is the spirit of it's the testimony of jesus um i wish i can hear an amen on that so i'm gonna go quickly and i want you to see so you see the purpose of a prophecy now let's go see now what what is about prophecy is written to about three people and i want you to see lift your hands to the lord and say uh okay there you go prophecy is written about three people in the bible number one the world or the nations shout please the world say it louder please the church of jesus christ in israel i want you to see very clearly when it talks about prophecy or foretelling the future or what is going to happen, I want you to see that. The th prophecy is about those three things. Every time we talk about end times, the end of the age, every time you see that, you have to see around those three people, the world or the nations, the church of Jesus Christ and Israel. In other words, we see what about what prophecy is. If the church uh, none of those substitute one another the church doesn't substitute israel israel is israel the church is the church and the world is the world the signs for each one of them are different the times to each one of them is different so the fulfillment of prophecy for each one of them is different. So I'm going to put you the world in perspective. And I'm going to put the church in perspective. Lift your hands and say perspective. perspective. Lift your hands louder. Say it please. Perspective. Lift your hands again. Perspective. perspective. Perspective is how God sees the world, the church, the nations. How God sees Israel. So I want you to see the whole prophetic perspective about what is happening why is happening what is going to happen and how can we prepare how can we respond to what is coming upon the world so this is important to understand so you know that the i want you to see the world in prophecy i want you to see what god think what's god's perspective in prophecy and i want you to see and write that down please the world in prophecy we live in a times of global shaking so right now, I want you to know that all things are being shaken. Um, the dry light collapses, the economy, uh, the nations, the government are being shaken. Number two, a global economic collapse. That is going to increase. It's not going to get better. It's going to be worse. So I want you to be prepared for it. Number three, natural disasters. Uh, Psalms 148.8. I want you to see, lift your hands and say natural disasters. Natural disasters are something that, um, that, that is going to happen, will increase, will intensify. And, and if you see what the Bible says, uh, let's read it together. One, two, three. Uh, whoa. Fire, Fire and hail, hail, snow, and what? Vapors, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. God is using nature to fulfill his word. In other words, don't be surprised that God allowed storms, uh, hurricanes, and all that to fulfill his word. Let's go back into, into disasters. More pandemics we will see. We will see it. And many people say, no, it's not going to come. Well, that's what Jesus said. It will increase. What type of pandemic? Uh, I, I don't have the time to go into it, but let's keep, keep moving forward. Perplexities and fear perplexities and fear what is a perplexity a perplexity is nothing more look at me please is nothing more that no way out not to know what to do and not to know where to go 
In other words, there are perplexities coming upon the earth already are here now. The people don't know what to do and where to go. So that's why we need to expect those uh, perplexities and fear. People will faint out of fear. This is what is happening with Israel. You will see a lot of people fainting because of fear. Number five, number six, times of confusion and chaos. In other words, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of chaos happening. Number seven, immigration crisis in the nations. You will see that uh, people coming from Africa to Europe, coming from Latin America to the United States. We have had almost 7 million people coming into this country illegally. There's so much happening in the borders of this nation. Something that the first president fixed it, now totaled we have open borders. There's so many things coming through it. Let's not be surprised that an atomic bomb will come through it. There's so many things that we don't know. And, and, and I want you to see a times of Noah again. We're going to see the times of Noah. We are already in the times of Noah. Lift your hands and say the times of Noah. No, let, let's keep it in times of Noah. And, and, and I want you to see Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And I'm going to touch a little bit on it. And then chapter 6, verse 11. Uh, and I want you to see something. What do you mean by the times of Noah? Jesus said, look at me for a moment. Jesus said, like the times of Noah will be the end times. When is the end times? Right now. So it would be like times of Noah. What was happening in the times of Noah? Write that down. In the times of Noah, we see the corruption in human character. And what do we see today? Same thing. People are becoming more evil and wicked. Number two, violence on the earth. We see the shedding of, of innocent blood on the earth. Again, we see repeating again, as in the times of Noah. What do we see in the times of Noah? We see the Nephilim coming to earth. What is the Nephilim? Nephilim, the word Nephilim means uh, giants. And the Nephilims were the giants that came from a mixture of, of fallen angels and women. And they, it came up, the Nephilim, it came up, the, uh, the, that, that uh, mixture came up. And that's why you see now, what are we going to see in the end time? We're going to see the UFO. I'm going to go because you get scared, so I'm going to go. So it's exactly repeating, God allows darkness to come to the earth. Sin and iniquity, the cup of sin and iniquity got its fullness. Then God judges and get God cleanses the earth like he did in Noah. In Noah's days. Can I hear an amen on that? So we see the Nephilim. We see the, the UFO. And, and that will be the excuse to say the UFO. What does UFO stand for, uh, Pastor Tommy? Unidentified flying objects. Obnis, what else they call it? Whatever they call it. Extraterrestrial, Extra John? Unidentified aerial phenomenon. John put it so scientific like. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to see the days of Noah, violence on the earth, bloodshed. We're going to see uh, corruption of the human being. People are becoming so evil. Here close to us in Hialeah, there was a 13 years old. He killed his own mother. The corruption of the human character. So we live in a, such a time that we need to wake up. There's a lot of people have no idea what is happening in the spirit dimension. They're in the boberia, you know. It's not I don't know what happened. So immigration, you will see, keep going. The times of Noah, you will see those Nephilim. We will see that type of, 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 of phenomenons, like John says. So it will be, uh, so now judgment to the nations. 
we are preaching a gospel. There's so many people now preaching a gospel that God is not a God of judgment. God is a God of love. How come he only preaches a God of judgment? You totally wrong. You in error. God is a God of love, but God is a God of judgment. That's the balance. If you don't believe it, if it God is judgment, Psalms 89, 14. God is a God of judgment because God has to judge the sin of the people. God gave them an opportunity to repent, but people don't repent. That's why another pandemic will come because people don't repent. So you see that uh, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Ooh. Oh, we preach a false love because God judges people because people, God loves people. Because judgment is for you and I to repent. That's why you need to see God. Can I hear an amen on that? So the truth before thy face. So truth, and and we see, let's go back into those judgment to the nations. Right now, the nations are being judged. Right now. So a tribulation period, not the great tribulation. Before the great tribulation, the church must go through tribulation. Because in tribulation is what God prepares the bride. I didn't say great tribulation. That is, we already been in heaven. Number 11, natural disasters already saw it. 12, deep darkness will cover the earth. Deep darkness will cover the earth. I just came back from Pakistan and we felt the covering of darkness. Even when we left in the airplanes, we felt darkness. Keep going, please. So natural disasters, the shaking, let's go back into the 12, into to the before. So, and then you see the darkness, go 13. Wisco, the shaking of the cosmos. What does it mean of the shaking of the cosmos? We're going to see right now a fight, a battle for the cosmos, for the heavens. Russia, China, the United States, and countries fighting for the cosmos. Can you imagine if something happened in the cosmos? All the computers, all phones, all the armament, all the instruments for war uh, are controlled from the cosmos, from the heavens. So there's going to be, uh, the earth will come out of the axe. What do you mean? Well, yes. And there will, that's why you see more of volcanoes. That's why you see more eruptions of volcanoes because the earth is coming out at acts. And, and this is the world in perspective. Richard Henson say the world in perspective. There will be a sudden worldwide blackout. This is something because of the earth, because there's so many things I can go into. Number 16, the attack of sexual perversion of the youth God showed me that by 2030 it will be the it will be the the I mean the most grotesque and perverse attack sexual I mean with sexual perversion with the young people so we need to prepare the young people to fight to resist we cannot be, but, but for that, for you to know those things, there's so many people, even here today, that they're not aware of those things. They're sleeping. That's why we need a spiritual awakening. No, let's talk about love. Let's talk about spiritual awakening. Let's talk about being awakened, being awakened. God wants you to be awake. Oh, yeah, Rabbi Shoko. An attack on sexual perversion. Keep going, please. So we see the world in perspective. Number 17, there will be a great famine on the earth. If you have any question, how much are you paying for the, for the box of eggs right now? There's famine in the land. What do you mean by the whole uh, chicken, what do you call that, the... Um, the ch- where they produce the chicken with the farms and, and they, they burn and then you say what is happening because everything is prepared is being prepared for the beast economy 
And we're going to see famine in the land. So you must be prepared. Start saving. Start storing food. Let me go over here. In other words, because it's coming. If you believe what the Bible says, if you believe what the apostle is telling you, you start preparing yourself. But for that, you need to be awakened. If you're spiritually sleeping, you will say, ah, yeah, you know, let me preach on love. <laughs> Perilous time, influence time. These are times of very dangerous. So this is the war in perspective. I wish I have time and go one by one and, 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 and break it down and, and what the Bible talks about. But I wanted to show the church what's the global perspective because the shaking that is taking place is to wake up the world, to wake up the leadership, the priesthood, and to wake up the church because God wakes up the church to shake. They, God shake you up to wake you up. God is shaking you up. And then something came into your uh, mind. Something come into your life like man, your business and, and you went wrong with your health. Not that God sent sickness, but God allowed it to shake you up. Because the Bible says in your shaking, in your crisis, you will follow God. You will pursue God. So many people said to me, God uh, kept impacting me. And I asked the question, tell me, what are the signs that, that you got an encounter with God? Oh, oh yeah, I, I like the glory. Oh, yeah, I like. No, you did not. Because if you did, the first thing that, that stay in your spirit after having an encounter with the glory of God is that you become hungry for God. Yeah. After I finished cap, I went to pray all night. After I've been seeking God, I've been after God, I've been praying more, I've been fasting more. I keep fasting and praying because when you have real encounter with God, you pursue God. You want for God. Rika, bro, oh, leak. You want for God. Number two, another sign that you had an encounter is a, it's a, it's a, it's a desire for holiness. Oh, God touched me. Oh, God touched me. No, God touched me because for one 24 hours, I was weeping and crying. And I say, Lord, why? I was crying so much. I didn't understand. He said, I was cleansing you. I was cleansing you. So there has to be a desire. What is the change after your encounter? Were you touched or were you changed? So it's time for the church to have real encounter with God. You continue with the same habit, with the same problem, with the same mindset. In this latter glory, we need to change our mindset. We need to change the way we think. You need to change the way you see yourself. You need to change like Jesus thinks. In this latter glory, we need power. We need prayer. We need to go after God. We need to evangelize more. Don't tell me you got an encounter and you do do the same thing. You didn't even pray. No, when you have an encounter, you feel like desire of holiness. The desire, it leaves you in here like, oh my God, I want God. I want a God. I want to pray more. I want God because God is cleansing his church. Put your hand together. So wake up. What is the summary and God's perspective for the world? Is all those things that are happening. Only those that are awake, awaken, perceive and see that. Amen. The rest of the people, the church is, is sleeping. They're not aware. So many people ask him, well, what's what happened with Israel? He go, what do you mean Israel? They don't know. Five virgins were alert. Being awakened is being alert in the spirit, not in the natural. You need to change your mindset, not in the natural, but in the spirit. We need to be alert. Jesus is coming soon. We need to awake, church. We need to serve more. We need to work more. We need to commit more. We need to, oh, hallelujah. Don't keep doing the same thing. Let's go. So you see God's perspective. None of those people, God's perspective for the world. Number two, God's perspective for the church. The church in prophecy, they're different people. 
The church doesn't replace Israel. There's a theory, a theology called the church is the replacement of Israel. That is an error. The church does not replace Israel. So they go to the church. The church, what is God's perspective for the church of Jesus Christ in the world? Number one, the church is a schedule for a massive revival. Is anybody writing? Can I hear an amen, people? A massive revival. Why? Because the church is, is dead. So the church needs to be revived again. Life needs to come to the services. Life needs to come. Not just a sermon to preach a nice sermon 45 minutes and go home. You need to come to church and be transformed. Be changed by the power and by the word. By the power and by the word. Oh, and anybody está here. Oh, shakadara. Number two. Uh, the greatest spiritual awakening. Why the church needs to be awakened? You know why? Because it's sleeping. Amen. Awake, awake, awake. So we're going to see, about to see. So the church is a schedule by God, not only for revival, but awakening. Number three, mega harvest of souls. The church is a schedule to be the to see the greatest, the mega harvest of souls, including your family. So it's time to evangelize. It's time to preach. It's time to talk about Jesus. Jesus is coming soon. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, Proverbs 10, 5, he says, those, I got nine minutes. So those that sleep, during the harvest brings shame to their fathers. Because they're sleeping again, the church is not awakened. So that's what God, the Holy Spirit, will bring that awakening. Number four, number three, keep going, keep going, please. Number four, so judgment, no, no, no. Lift your hands to the Lord. What is, what is the church in prophecy? Yeah, you go. We will see number four. Latter glory. We're going to see the manifestation of the latter glory. Why? The glory manifestation, the glory coming upon the earth. That's why I've spoken cap. Why? Because the church is a schedule to live, to see the, the glory of God. Why? Jesus doesn't come for a powerful church. He doesn't come for a healthy church. He comes for a glorious and holy church. Glorious church, a splendor. A glorious church is a church of splendor. It's a church of miracles, signs, wonders. It's a church of power, authority. Is that the church we have today? So the glory is a schedule for the church to experience the glory. And we have already entered in the latter glory. You need to change your mindset. Everything that I'm doing, I am changing. From administration to the spirit to the way I flow. Why? Because the latter glory is different. Start thinking differently. I keep going. End time wealth transfer. The church is a schedule for people, for the remnant church to receive tons of wealth. No, you didn't get it. Ecclesiastes 226. In other words, the church is already on schedule to receive. There's so many of you do not believe that because you're not awakened. If you were awakened, you would say, I got it. That is for me. I've been sowing. I've been believing. You've been believed, God. This is for the people that believe. Do you believe God will take uh, the building of your boss and give it to you? Many of you don't. So you need to believe. If you believe, you will see my glory. If you believe. No, no, no. Let's read it. One, two, three, go. I need singers. Read it, please. For God giveth men what is good for in his sight. Wisdom and knowledge and enjoy. But to the sinners, he gives travail to gather and to hip up. That may give to him that is good before God. In other words, somebody accumulated so much rich and wealth, riches and wealth, 
to give it to you. See, people don't believe it. Apostle John, they don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you will believe it, you will be sowing more. Why? Because you're not going to get the transfer of wealth with the $20 every almost 40 years doing the same thing. You need to believe, sow more. Take a step of faith to sow more, to believe for more. God, higher level, higher devil. Higher levels, higher seed. You go and say, God, I will transfer. I prophesy to you that many of you, people will come to offer their buildings, their wealth. So many of you said, ah. Wow. Keep going. Let's go back. Lift your hands and say, yes, amen. Number four, let's go. Time for wealth, times of refreshing. You know what times of refreshing are? The verses are there. Times of refreshing are times of rest. Rest. When you are refreshed, you're rested. But you're not resting in your own ability. You're resting in the fact that God is in control of your life. Let me go, keep going. Number seven. Let's go. This is the church and prophecy. Let's move forward quickly, quickly. The church and prophecy. Times of deception. The church, times of deception. Deception. Jesus spoke about three times in chapter 24 of the book of Matthew about deception. Three times. And even in Matthew 24, 22, he said, even the elect will be deceived if possible. There's a lot of people being deceived. These are times of great deception. People falling into false doctrine. People falling into different things. Number th- number eight, times of great apostasy. Millions, not thousands, millions are backslidden because of COVID. They never came back to the Lord and they went back where they came from to their drunkenness, to depression, to loneliness, everything because the apostasy, the devil never take you out of the church. They come out little by little. He's pulling your, your cord. He's pulling you and take you out. Grace of apostasy. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. These are times of great apostasy. One of the big singer and one of the famous groups, music group, he came out saying, everything I spoke on holiness, I don't believe it anymore. And he's a big singer. We have sung those songs here. Denying Jesus. Apostasy everywhere. I know man of God that they used to be the powerful man in the apostolic. They were pioneers. And now today, they believing in, in that, that there's no rapture. If there's no rapture, why are you going to sanctify them? And I can say so many things. So now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time shall depart from the faith. Given he to seducing spirits, UFO will become a religion. People will worship them. And they will say, when the rapture takes place, UFO, they took them to, they disappeared because somebody took them from the earth. And you know and I, we're going to be in heaven. But so sad those that stayed. Because they will know that we are in heaven. And they stay for the head to be cut off. Giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils is a doctrine of devil to believe that you can do anything. You can live in sin and thinking you're going to heaven. It's a doctrine from hell to say that you're drinking and, and, and partying and you think you're going to heaven. That's a doctrine of devil. It's a doctrine of devil to think that Jesus is not coming back. People don't help me. Come on. Number two. So there's a doctrine of devils. I got one minute. Come on, number two. So times of deception. So no, number two, verse two. Lift your hands to the Lord. 
verse 2. You need to be in the spirit. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with hot iron. What do you mean having the conscience seared? Your conscience is seared. Pastor Tommy, if you sin, you lie and you don't feel bad. You lost the fear of God. How many of you, how do you know you're not an apostasy? How many of you, when you do something wrong, either with your mouth, anything you do, you feel bad? That tells you, you, you got the fear of God. But there's some people don't, don't, don't feel anything. So keep going, verse 3. And this is something I want you to see. Run, run. Forbidding too many and commanding to abstain from meats. What are they doing now? There's a digital meat now. Digital chicken. Because we can't kill the cows. If you don't want to kill them, bring it to me. I, I kill them. I eat them. <laughs> and receive meats. Wow. Meats. Yeah. In other words, you getting into that making food an idol. This is worse. Let's go back. I'm finishing. Lift your hands and say, Lord, deliver us from evil. Say it louder. This is the church and what happened that is on and off? Lift your hands to the Lord. Deception. They will see great days of apostasy and then go back. And then he said, there will be a great persecution of the church. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And many of you, because in the spirit, everything to understand that, you must be in the spirit. Otherwise, if you're not awakened to the fact that this is real, those things are happening in the world and in the church, you live your life like normal. And the days of Noah, the Bible says they're getting married. They buy, they sell, they drink. And then you said, what's wrong with drinking? What's wrong with getting married? Nothing wrong. They put those things at their idol. They don't care about God. Many business women, business people in church, they prosper being blessed, but when they got the blessing, they leave. They put their business, their idol. God is first. So, they great persecution. In persecution, people come together. In persecution, people, when you went through your crisis in your marriage, you see who really were people were. Keep going, keep going. Go to the next verse 10. I need to go, I need to run. God is separating the wheat and the tares. What do you mean? These are the days, these are the days of great separation. Look at me for a moment, and I want you to take the, the, the picture. The great separation, lift your hand, say separation. The Holy Spirit had been telling me, even in the services, even in the leadership services, He'd been telling me, I am separating the wheat and the tares. The tares are bad herbs bad and God is separating their people in the church even in King Jesus ministry sitting down here now that they are tears but the Bible says do not take him out don't uproot it because you don't know only the angels and God the Holy Spirit knows who's a tear or who's a wheat how do you know first you see it by the fruit See it by the fruit. See it by the fruit. Wheat represent believers that carries fruit. So if you see, is it tear? Yeah, but the fruit of love, the fruit of serving, the fruit of commitment, the fruit of sowing, the fruit. There's fruit in his life. No, man. Lift your hands. Hey, man. So there's fruit. The tears. And this is the difference, Apostle John. This is the difference, Prophet Chris. This is the difference. The difference is the tears. When the wind blows, the winds represent the Holy Spirit blows. The tears never bend. Oh, 
I wish I can get a better, better, better respond. The tears never bend. In other words, if I try to, the wind or the spirit try to bend them, they don't. Or the wheat bend. That represents humility. Do you accept that you made a mistake? Do you accept that you are prideful? Do you accept that you're wrong? Do you accept if you do, the Holy Spirit is blowing. The Holy, oh, Rebecca, the Holy Spirit is blowing. Father, blow upon this church. Father, move the tears and show who the really wheat are. Put your hands together. That, say with me, the church in prophecy. Say it, say it. So what else? Oh, I can go on and on and on. Numbers 11, the revelation of the remnant. When COVID came, it really showed. Listen, look at me. Put your attention in what I'm teaching, please. This will depend, this is death or life. I am preparing you for what is coming. What the church is scheduled for? The revelation of the remnant bride. How do you know that you are the remnant? First, <laughs> I can go and on, but I don't have time. But Jesus come for a remnant, not the whole church. I got prophets, they have, they have uh, the vision of the rapture. And a 1,000 member church, only 20% lifted. 80% stayed. A lot of tears. They speak the same language they speak they think to adapt to the language of the church but when they get what they want they leave no I need it better the restoration of the fear of God what the church is in schedule for God will restore the fear of God because the fear of God is what makes you obey I, I didn't have to teach about tithe if you got the fear of God because you need to obey I didn't have to teach you to pray come pray it tomorrow we're gonna pray for Israel I wouldn't have to tell you because you obey you got the fear of God because the fear of God restricts evil when you got the fear of God, you don't want to sin. And when you do, you feel bad. The fear of God, the fear is the awe, the reverence, the respect to God. I, I don't know if you're here today. In other words, there's so many people lying, cheating, drinking in the church. They lost the fear of God. So God told me there's going to be a wave of the, my fear in the church. Oh, there's going to be a massive way of the fear of God. That when you I don't have to tell you to worship. If you got the fear of God, lift your hand, brother. Lift your hand. Uh, if you got the fear of God, you say, my God, I'm in front of the president. I'm not more than a president. I'm in front of the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Somebody have to shout. Lift your hand. Say yes, 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 yes. So I, I can tell you how people lost the fear of God. They come to church, tattoo all their bodies. Oh, is that truth from God or not God? Don't give me that stuff. Listen, when they come to church, they come with jeans, shorts, sandals. When you see a police officer, what do you see? How do you identify him? uniform and we come to the house of God before in the world you got the best shoes the best clothes to go to the world and now you come to church that shows even the way you dress that you don't fear God it doesn't have to be the branding oh it has to be this no but to God you dress to see the king on Sunday you dress to worship the king you dress the best you can oh no 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 the young people cool man cool drinking coffee drinking in the pulpit that's why when they drop people drop dead they're gonna fear God and I'm gonna finish because I, I see that many of you are getting very uncomfortable number 13 
Number 13. Let's go. A wave of holiness. A wave of holiness. After cup. If if you ask me, Apostle, Dad, what have you felt in your spirit? I am so, I can say hungry, but it is something in my spirit for holiness, purity. I want holiness in my life. The way I talk, the way I dress, the way I walk. I want to look like Jesus. Young people. True young people really want holiness. The remnant youth, they want holiness. They want prayer. They want fasting. They want, they, they want to evangelize. Because you want, you got the heart of God. Put your hands together. The cleansing of the bride. Revelation 19, 7. The cleansing. Lift your hands and say, the cleansing of the bride. Can we start singing? Did you get a new song? The cleansing of the bride. Right now, you as a church and me are scheduled for the cleansing of the bride. And somebody said, I'm waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you. You make the decision and he gives you the grace to be cleansed. But you need to make a decision. How many of you recognize that need cleansing in your mind, your heart, your emotions, your will? One, two, the rest of it. The perfect one, Father, take him to the rapture ahead of time, please. <laughs> Let us be glad and rejoice. Give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself, make herself, make herself, make, not the pastor, make herself, not God, make herself. You need to stop drinking. You need to stop leaving sin behind. You need to get consecrated to God. Make herself ready. Let us be glad. Lift your hands. Let us be glad. And give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife make herself herself ready. Lift your hands and say, God, here I am. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Leave the past. Leave your sin. And go back in holiness. We don't preach these messages in America. We don't preach the church. Holiness. Fear of God. Ayúdame, help me. Go back and finish. Oh, I wish somebody can help me and put that voice in the atmosphere. Oh. Let us be loved. Lastly, the church of Jesus Christ. How many of you consider yourself a remnant? If you're a remnant, you are a worshiper. I'm a remnant. Help to worship at least. If you if you are a remnant, you are a prayer warrior. If you're a remnant, you're a soul winner. If you're a remnant, Oh, if I said if you're a remnant, you are holy, holy, like God is holy. And lastly, the church is a schedule to enter in Goshen. Why? This is the ribalata. This is the way the church will prepare. Goshen, 
the word Goshen, Genesis 47, 6, and Genesis 47, 27. The word Goshen means a place of plenty. When there's no eggs in the rackets of the supermarket, you will have eggs in your table. When the banks are empty, the bank accounts are empty, you account will not be empty. No, you didn't believe it. I believe at least. The Egypt, the land of Egypt is before thee, and the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell in the land of Goshen. Goshen, the land of plenty. Goshen represent the glory of God. The glory is the only realm of total sufficiency. That's the reason if you don't shift to the latter glory, you're not going to be able to enter in Goshen because that is the only realm of God that is plenty. His glory, His presence. Thank you, God, because the rest of the people don't tell me anything. Can you put your hand together and wake up yourself? Wake up yourself. Wake up yourself. Those that are watching online, wake up, wake up, wake up. God is shaking you up. You're going through shaking for you to wake up to the reality. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. I am proclaiming from King Jesus ministry. Jesus is coming soon. Be prepared. God has said this is, this is what be prepared. Goshen, 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 let them dwell. And no industrious man among Goshen. Goshen represent the glory and the glory of God is the goodness of God the abundance of God so God say I will enter you in Goshen do not be afraid if you obey if you get holy if you sanctify yourself if you obey if you walk for me if you serve me I will get you in Goshen thank you so much for watching today's message if you are watching today and you have not made the decision to accept Jesus into your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud and say with me after me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, thank you so much. If this video has been a blessing to your life, please share it with your friend and subscribe to our channel so don't miss out any other video or live broadcast. Thank you so much. We love you. Bless you. See you next time.